13th of March this year, the inevitable happened. The first case of COVID-19 was confirmed in the country. While the severity of the disease in the country was still uncertain, the world had already been dealt a tough blow as witnessed in some parts of Europe and Asia. While the world's biggest medical manufacturers were struggling to contain the disease, a huge gap in critical medical machinery was left in the system. A disease which came from nowhere and God, what has come to the world? Okay, Is the world really going to come to an end? And then you find everybody developing ventilators around the world, everybody, they're, they're short of ventilators around the world. And that's really what struck me that, why don't we take this up? And uh, also the CS of industry challenging us that if everywhere in the world, the automotive industry is developing a ventilator, why can the Kenyan automotive industry not develop a ventilator? That is how the journey to build Kenya's first ventilator began. The journey of a thousand miles began with recruiting an able team led by software engineers, hardware engineers, biomedical engineers to actualize the project. I think there's a lot of talent we have in Kenya, which the local government the local manufacturers have not really exploded. Youth which have come out of university and all that, I think they have a lot of talent. If guided in the, right, uh, in the right way, they can develop a lot. My task was once the team decided on, on, on a design, uh, the design process is a whole journey on itself. My task was to now uh, convert that design into electrical drawings on a software, test it on a software then now convert it to a PCB. A PCB is a printed circuit board. This is what people like to call motherboards and electronic designs. So my work basically was to build these uh, PCBs for the ventilator. With the motherboard in check, the team thought they were ready to launch and take their ventilator to the market. However, that was not the case. The first prototype was mechanical and could not pass for mass market production. They had to go back to the drawing board. We ended up looking online and seeing what everyone else in the world is making and we settled with the design from MIT, uh, the US. And we started developing that prototype. So this is the first prototype and uh, this was the final prototype we came up with. So this is also a mechanical system which uses an ambi bag to ventilate the patient. So an ambi bag is actually a device that a lot of hospitals already have and all it does is it mechanically pushes the ambu bag. And this is the prototype we went for. After meeting a lot of doctors and um, uh, anesthetists as well, we realized there's a lot of um, downfalls or, or um, shortfalls on this ventilator. And we realized there's not a lot of electronic control and patient safety was being compromised here. So, we ended up changing the design and going for an electronic sorry, electronic control system. That is how Pomaishi 3.0, an intensive care unit ventilator, which can be used on pediatric and adults weighing up to 180 kgs, was born. The ventilator has since gotten the note of approval from the Kenya Bureau of Standards. Firstly, we've used um, battery power, which is a solar battery. This enables us to use this in remote places, as long as you have a couple of panels and you're good to go. Uh, the other thing about this is it's a portable unit. So as long as you have portable oxygen cylinders, the system will be able to be used in ambulances, in airplanes, in, in any um, patient that is required for you know, ventilation for a short period before they move to the ICU or being transported from uh, up country. However, despite the victory, caution is always the order of the day due to the critical nature of ventilators. There's a hospital that burned because of a um, prototype. Or, let me say, a new model of a ventilator that was built. Uh, it was a response, a COVID, a COVID response ventilator. And that burned because of a, it burned a whole hospital because of a spark that triggered oxygen. We are working with oxygen here, which is very, it's very, it's combustible. Despite the risk, John Latham says the benefit outweighs the risk, as Pumanshi 3.0 is over three times cheaper than the globally imported ventilators. A lot of these uh, international companies have been creating more and more expensive machines. Yeah? Um, 
And this, this machine here, we're looking at a, a cost point of around $10,000, a million shillings. Um, compared to ventilate, a typical ventilator is priced around thirty, forty, even fifty thousand dollars. Furthermore, Latham acknowledges that COVID-19 has reiterated the place and importance of medical technology. And you're essentially hiring the medical equipment when you use it. That's part of your bill is the ventilator or the X-ray machine or whatever you're whatever you're using. And you can see the numbers here. We're looking at you know fourfold, fivefold, sixfold reduction in price, which should impact bills equally over time as these machines get into the market. With cases of COVID-19 on the rise in the country and the rest of the world facing a severe second wave of infection, machinery such as ventilators will be key to a quicker recovery. Latham urges that the government, in its capacity, has to support local enterprises, particularly those currently in the space of manufacturing personal protective equipment in the fight of COVID-19 pandemic. If you look at a lot of countries, um, when you see very nascent um, early stage startups like this, there would be grant money available, uh, there would be tax con breaks, tax concessions, um, tax waivers. Um, and I think also when uh, products get to market, when we, we do all this work to get them to market, um, we should protect our industries. Yeah? Um, other countries do it. And we should do it too.